Okay, let's pray. Hola, Leah. Okay, pray. Say finally and pray. Do you have any father? Yeah, father. Thank you for the day. And thank you for mommy and daddy. And thank you for the Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer. Okay, we are now going to have an opening song. We're we're going to I'm going to be singing under his wing. Under his wing, I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me, and I am his child. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, what a refuge in sorrow. How the heart yearningly turns to its rest. Often when earth has no balm for my healing, there I find comfort and there I find and there I am blessed. Under his wings. Under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, oh, what a precious enjoyment. There will I hide till life's trials are all Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide. Safely abide forever. Amen. 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 We're now going to hand over to Brother Tabiza for the evening message. Thank you very much, Sister Aisha. Thank you for the song service. And thank you for those who participated in the singing. And more. Uh, in like um in uh, uplifting more uplifting is um that the children are participating and um the um the little uh, boy who prayed and sang and uh, Aisha is leading out and uh, we we thank the lord for these are blessings because children are blessing especially when they officiate like this um and i pray that may this be uh, as uh, as we go through this message this evening, that the Holy Spirit will be present and in abundance, that you will be truly blessed. Um, without further ado, the scripture reading for today is taken from um, uh, from Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven to eight. 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, which reads, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them, also that love is appearing. This is uh, the saying from the Apostle Paul, when towards the end of his ministry, this is what you are saying. And you are saying he has fought a good fight. And the, uh, the, the topic for this evening's message is, be thou faithful until death. Let us pray once more. Lord, we believe you're with us, for you did promise us that where two or three are gathered in your name, you're there in the midst. Lord, may we hear from you. May you speak to us. May our hearts be touched, be turned to you, and that honor and glory be given unto you. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Y yes, Apostle Paul was very confident that he has, he has fought a good race and that the crown is there waiting for him. Um, I've often wondered uh, whether are, are we in a position to be that confident in these present times when we face all these challenges, when all these things, uh, um, uh, when ourselves, uh, we do these things in humility. You know, if I compare that kind of uh, confidence and the, the, the one about um, the, the Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, which reads, ye are the patience of the saints, ye are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. See, there is some kind of patience. There's some kind of uh, 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 humility, the, the faithfulness in it. And I know the Apostle Paul was also patient because he's run a good dress. And also, uh, he, 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 there's some kind of humility. But the, this for him to assure himself that a crown is waiting for him. It's a testimony of his spiritual journey. If you look at the way he started, where he had this zeal, which was uh, uh, addressed to the wrong, wrong cause, where he was overturned, where he ministered to the Gentiles, he went through trials and you know, tribulations and persecution. He, he went through the shipwreck, he went through um, a snake bite and he did not die. All these things were challenges to him. But persecution is one, persecution, persecution is one thing. But I would want to believe that these days, we, are, we haven't reached that stage where we are persecuted for Christ's sake. There are trials and tribulations. In terms of trials, um, we go through them. At times, we go through trials and tribulation because we are doing a journey. We are running away from the Lord. And the Lord, you know, he, he would, uh, he, he, the Lord is talking to us so that we come back to the fold and do that which we're supposed to do. Well, the other occasion is perhaps we, you have done wrong. And the Lord is chastising you. And you go through those challenges. You have to go through the, those because uh, the Lord, he says, in as much as he loves us, he also chast chastises us. The other one is perhaps is for, uh, for the Lord's sake. You are being persecuted for um, upholding God's principles by standing firm on um the God's, uh, uh, God's, uh, um, uh, God's uh, words and also the, the up, upholding and standing firm on Jesus Christ's ministry. So these are sort of um, tribulations that we go through, but here 
It says, the, be faithful until death. Be faithful until death. So we will look at the uh, situations whereby are we prepared to die for Christ? Christ died for us. So that we'll be saved. And hence again from yesterday, we know that um, Christ loved us. And that in fact, we should love Christ because he first loved us. So do we have that kind of uh, faithfulness, that kind of love that we are prepared to die for Christ. But we find that it is not that easy for us because the things of the, of the world have engulfed us. But if you read from Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, it reads, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be, and, and be, and, and be exceedingly um, glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecute they, the prophets, which were before you. So the great, there's the reward in heaven for persecution. But there again, I would want to, to, to pose a, a question. When we are enduring this persecution, is it because we, we are looking forward for a reward or because we are doing it because we love the Lord? Or because uh, you're doing this faithfully whether you get a reward or whether you get, don't get a reward. But, you know, in life, we go through so many challenges. We want to refer to the Church of Simena. The Church of Simena, they, they were known to be very poor and they did not have anything. So it's difficult when you are kind of deprived as in the, these worldly um, uh, possessions and you are being persecuted. It's difficult for you to remain faithful. But the, the, the people, the, the church of Simena went through those challenges. It starts when, when we read um, on manuscript, manuscript chapter, um, manuscript 92, um, uh, 1901, it reads, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. If you hear what the Spirit say unto the churches and meditate upon the instruction given to them, your ears will be closed to the folly and the nonsense which surrounds you. You will neither hear and repeat those lies the soul um, hunger. These travel, uh, trivialities are, are to you distasteful and disgusting. You have no desire to feast upon them, but choose instead the bread of heaven. So the simple sentence, the uh, uh, sentence, ye that hath an ear, let him hear. So here, Sister White is saying, if you're going to listen to what the Spirit says, automatically you'll be granted that gift, uh, that peace of mind, the peace that surpasses all understanding, so that even if you're going through challenges and old, or, or persecution, you'll be just focused on what the Spirit is uh, telling you, that you will not be in, a, you won't even be interested to listen to what everything is going around. You know, people people can talk, people can, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the, the devil is a master of mixing the truth and the error. So you pick the truth and then mix it. And if you are not strong, if you're not strong in the faith, 
that might easily pull you down. You see, the, uh, the, 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 the church of Simena, it is also in, the, in uh, verse 9, it says, the Lord um, Jesus was speaking to, addressing to them, just like as he was addressing um, the church of Ephesus. He says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, that thou art rich. And I know the uh, blasphemy of them which I say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So, what is the synagogue of Satan? The synagogue um, of Satan, here Christ speak of the church which Satan pro presides at the synagogue. Its members are the children of disobedience. They are those who choose to sin, who labor uh, to make uh, void the, uh, the holy law of God. It is Satan's work, Satan's work to um, uh, mingle evil with good and to remove the uh, uh, distinction between good and evil. Christ would have a church that labors to separate the evil from good, whose members will not willingly tolerate wrongdoing but will ex 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 excel it, expel it uh, from the head and uh, from the from the heart and life. This is uh, taken from the Review and Herald, December 4, 1900. This is what uh, Sister White is saying that they are they are they, they are those people. Who are, are are so are not deterred about whatever the enticement uh, of the of the devil, like the serpent, but who are very strong. But also, if you remember back in the Garden of Eden, um, that's where the fact the first act of uh, mixing the truth and error took place, when the serpent said. Um, uh, uh, when the the, uh, the, the, uh, the serpent questioned Eve that will you die? You see, the same deception we started in the Garden of Eden, the same deception will, is being felt even throughout all ages. The tactics is the same. But here, Jesus Christ was saying to the church of Simena, be faithful until death. He was saying that you'll be cast into prison so that you will be tried. He was saying also, uh, we have tribulation, 10 days. Be faithful and you receive a crown of life. See, the tribulation 10 days could have been literally um, uh, persecutions were taking place during Nero, which was uh, uh, which was in intensified during those ten days. But also, it could be um, persecution, um, say in especially in these modern days, whereby people are being killed for standing for Christ. Over the years, there's been people who've been killed for Christ, and uh, one who comes into mind is Stephen. And Stephen, uh, instead of uh, uh, you know, being aggrieved, he was looking at those who were stoning them and uh, praying that they be forgiven. That's endurance till death. The disciples, they were all murdered in different ways. They were all executed. They stood firm for Christ's sake. But you see, at this stage, we have not reached that stage whereby we are being persecuted for Christ's sake. And I'm wondering that how many of us will be able to stand firm? How many of us will be able to 
to, to take a stand. One of the tests that we endured is when we went through COVID. It was only just a little bit of pressure from the authorities and everyone or those people who profess to, uh, to be strong, they succumbed. I'm not saying that it is a, a test which is a, a, a biblical ref, a reference, but I'm just referring to it that if we um, could succumb easily to that, what more when you are threatened with life? What more when you are being bent alive like the reformers? Are we be able to, to, to endure to the end? We, we, we meet here, we, we, we pray together, we study the word, we, we are enriched, and we study the word, but are we prepared to endure until the end? We know that these, these, these are the end times. And uh, we are preparing for the second coming of our Lord Jesus. We know that we are the third Elijah, that we should proclaim the, uh, the third angels, um, uh, the, the three angels um, uh, gospel. There are so many countries who do not accept that. There are so many countries who are, are rejecting that. And that even in the year in the UK, there was a lady who was imprisoned, although she was released later on, for praying silently. So in as much as um, persecution in this country is not prevalent, but it will come. They will come a time that it will come. Are we faithful? Are we be able to, 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 to stand firm? It will be. It will come to te, uh, to, to 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 test. Matthew five verse forty four. It reads, "But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good for them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you." So this is the kind of now love which defies logic. The, the love which was displayed when Stephen was uh, stoned, the love which was displayed when Jesus died at the cross. This is what is being displayed. This is what we're being encouraged uh, to do, that kind of uh, faithfulness, that kind of belief, that kind of complete surrender to God. This is what you're supposed to go through. As it's saying in Revelation 14, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So keeping the commandments of God, upholding God's principles and having the faith of Jesus Christ. This is what we're supposed to experience. Colossians 3, verse 23 to 24. He says, when, whatsoever you do, do it heartily, heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. See, whatever we do, we do it heartily. So we should not change because of circumstances. We should be praising the Lord, whatever a situation you find yourself in. We should be praising the Lord. One of those um, situations I've always um, uh, alluded or uh, acknowledged is that if you manage to see the Lord's hand in every situation, 
be it in celebration, be it in fear, be it in confusion, be it in any way, whatever, or facing death. If you manage to see the Lord's hand in it and that you acknowledge him and you praise him. This is at a, a higher level. You see, that's why the Apostle Paul was able to say after he is going through all those challenges, after he faced the challenge that he had in the initial of his uh, the, uh, the initial um, uh, period during the early days of his ministry, where no one trusted him, and even the disciples were not even sure or where uh, uh, where he was, he overcame all that, and he remained steadfast. For uh, Paul was a Roman; he was a Jew. All those things. And wherever he went, he stood firm. And was even at the, at the, at, uh, as, uh, at the, in, in a position to rebuke Peter when he was kind of not sincere in his um, ministry to the Gentiles. He stood firm. So that's why when he reaches the stage whereby uh, uh, against all odds, he, know, he knew that it is time for him now to, uh, to, to die. He will soon die. That's when he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me. At that day, and not to me only, but unto all the, of them also that love is appearing. So that the, for him to show the kind of humility, he was not just referring to himself only. He was also referring to those who love Jesus at his appearance. Those who um, we have, uh, we have, we have the patience and those who kept the God's command, uh, commandments and uh, the faith of Jesus Christ. They will have a crown. Uh, a crown. Of, uh, the Lord Jesus will give them a crown into everlasting life. See, the, the, there was reference again, and in Revelation uh, six. Revelation six. Um, uh, Revelation six, when the uh, the, the saints were were lamenting uh, how how long um, the, the, the Lord will keep, uh, will wait until uh, he, he avenges those who persecuted them. Revelation six verse nine to eleven. I will read in your hearing. It says, "And when he opened the fifth seal, this was as, um, we are looking at this uh, this uh, this seal." and the plea for the matters. It says, and when he opened the fifth seal and saw so, uh, under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? See, the response there was very, very good and interesting. Instead of saying, okay, we will avenge them in this manner, verse 11 says, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little uh, season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So then the focus was not on a vengeance, rather the focus was on reward. So we see that um, there are those who have already died, uh, who, who were killed for Christ's sake. They will be given 
a white robe. A white robe is similar to a crown. They were faithful. You see, they put all their uh, everything, their whatever, their belief, everything that they, they, they believed in into the heaven bound uh, treasure, not about uh, the earthly possessions. So we ourselves should not look and be enticed by earthly possessions. For them, they will lose their value. Even Jesus himself, when he was going through a trial, he said his kingdom is not here on earth, but is in heaven. So it is that kingdom that we should be focused on, that kingdom that will enable us to inherit eternal life. So as we go on, as we read so many encouragements, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 13, verses 5 to 6, it comes with another dimension of how we should conduct ourselves. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have, for ye hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So let's pause. So it is not only in, that, in our belief, but in all, also in our conversation that we do not covet, that we be content with what we have. What it means, even if we're going persecution, we just accept. Perhaps some people, some would say, the Lord allowed it for a good reason. So he says, you should, because we know that the Lord has promised us that he will never leave. He will never leave us, nor forsake him. When you're going through these persecutions, when you're going through this painful, he will be with you. And if you are in the Lord, you will be with you that you endure until the end. In verse 6, it says, so that not, 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 um, not we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men should do to me. So this just to validate that um, Apostle Paul was saying, uh, he, we should say whatever things which is... Um, inflicted by men that will not fear. See, in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25, it says, and every man that striveth for the mastering uh, is temperate in all things. Now they, they, they do it to... Uh, um, obtain a, a corruptible crown, but it's but we an incorruptible crown. So in other words, those uh, who, who's um, been in, influenced by the things of this world, that, that those who have been engulfed by the things of this world, their crown is corruptible. But those who are faithful, those who are temperate in all things, I know in Revelation 14, verse 12, what is mentioned most is the, the patience and the faith. But here, he says that will be temperate in all things. Exercise temperance. And perhaps so that the fruits of the Spirit will be manifest. Because once you are temperate, even if you are persecuted, that, that reward that you have is incorruptible. So we know that Christ himself, he did say that we will suffer persecution. He said that every one of those who believe in him, just as he also 
went through that kind of uh, challenge and suffered persecution, we, uh, we also will suffer persecution. In um, 2 Timothy 3, verse 12, the Apostle Paul says, Yea, and all that we uh, will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That all that will have, or that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. So mentally, we should be prepared to go through such a challenge. Because, uh, no, uh, because the things of the world, the carnal mind, is enemy to God, uh, to God, and that is, which is spiritual cannot relate to that which is carnal. So, which means for as long as you are connected in um, to Christ spiritually, it will not make sense to those with carnal mind and you'll be persecuted. And even Jesus himself, he said, he was talk, addressing the apostles. It was towards the end when he was just about to go to be uh, crucified. The verse, which is John 16, verse 33. He says, these things I've spoken unto you, what in me ye might have peace. So that's the first assurance that he gives them. He said, if for as long as you, uh, you are in Christ, you have peace. The same peace which I alluded earlier on as I started the presentation, that peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus says that you have that peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulations, but be of good share. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I've, I've overcome the, uh, the, the I've overcome the world. This was the time when Je Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to heaven for a while, and he'll come back again. You could see the disciples grappling with this idea: what Jesus meant, you go to heaven and then come back. But little did they know, the disciples, that when they remain behind, when they are being empowered by the Holy Spirit, they will face challenges and persecution. And here is the promise. Um, the promise that uh, Jesus saying, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yes, the church of Simena, the church of Simena, they were very poor. They were persecuted more in a, in a very rigorous manner. But Christ said, don't worry. Even those who look at you, who um, call you all sorts of names and revile you and persecute you, don't worry. Don't focus on the things of this world, but focus on the, the, the things to come in heaven, you will have a crown. Yes, Jesus promised that they will have a crown in heaven. And that even though they'll be cast into prison, in the, even though there are all sort of manner of uh, in, um, pain inflicted on them, they should endure. For the the for, for as they endure, they'll be rewarded. Sister White says in Herald and Review and Herald, November, November 22, 1898, he says, In that day, a final uh, in that day of final punishment and reward, all both saints and sinners will recognize in him who, who was crucified the judge of all living, every crown that is given to their saints of the Most High will be bestowed by the hands of Christ. Those hands that cruel priests and rulers condemned 
to be nailed to the cross, he alone can give to men the cons uh, cons cons um, consolation of eternal life. That it is only Christ who gives the consolation of eternal life. And here, Sister White was saying that the persecution is not coming only from those who do not know Christ. But he says, even the hands of the, the cruel priests who persecute those who believe in Christ. So, in the final punishment, in the final punishment and reward, that is when Jesus comes, those who have the patience will be rewarded, who have kept the commandment and we have the faith of Jesus will be rewarded. You see, this is what we should be looking at. And more so, like I said to, uh, before, it's not only like looking at the reward, no. We're looking also that you've kept the Lord's commandments and you have the faith of Jesus Christ. It is crucial that we should have the faith of Jesus Christ because we know that if we just completely surrender to Christ completely if we allow him to dwell in our heart as you are saying in um, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 that behold is at the door and is knocking and that any, anyone who opens the door you come in and sup, him, and sup with him if we happen to let Christ come into our lives. He is the one who teaches us how to live that life which is acceptable uh, before God. That will uh, enlighten us so that when we face challenges, our focus is not on challenges. Our focus is running a good rest. Rest, uh, rest. The focus is um, doing that which is right for Jesus. So this is what we are facing here. And as we go through these churches, the seven churches, each one of them, they had their own good deeds. Each some of them, uh, they did not do right. They've been rebuked to repent. But if you find that the church in Simena, perhaps is the church whereby they were not uh, they were not rebuked, but they were commended, and that they should continue, just they should be strong, they should resist those uh, evil temptation, evil temptations from the day from the devil, that they should remain steadfast, that they should remain focused on Jesus. And that they will receive a crown of life. What more is more important to receive eternal, the crown, the uh, the gift of eternal life, or to gain all these earthly possessions and lose your life? It is us for it up to us to have that discernment. It is up to us as we go through challenges, as we come in this, especially we are, uh, yeah, we came to this land for various different uh, reasons from our respective uh, uh, place of birth. And majority of the time we strive to survive. As we strive to survive, you find that more challenges come our way we should not be discouraged. We should not be perplexed. We should not um, take this into mind. But as we focus on Jesus, as we have the faith of Christ, we will endure until the end. So this is some kind of, this is a, a message of encouragement, a message of hope so that as we face these challenges, 
we should remain steadfast and be faithful until death. These are the end times. In as much as we're doing whatever we do, if we don't have this endurance, if we do not have uh, this patience, just imagine when you have done all this, when you have suffered all this, and then you will not endure until the end. How sad it is that you have kept the faith, uh, the faith to a certain extent, then you give up. Just imagine the impact that you do have, that if you remain faithful, even throughout the end, when it does not even make sense to you, even the surrounding world is collapsing, just remain steadfast in the Lord, and you'll be rewarded with the gift of eternal life. This is the message this evening. Amen. 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 to give us a closing prayer. If Brother Mike is not available, we shall close in prayer. I am here. I am here, Mrs. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you and glorify you for your goodness, your love and kindness for the opportunity that you've given us to hear your word. I pray that you forgive our sins. You cleanse us from all righteousness. You are faithful and just to forgive us all our sins. We confess them. 
We thank you for the message tonight. I pray that you bless them. And serving the you use tonight, Lord, may you bless his ministry. May he bless his family, bless each and every one of us. As we go separate ways, Lord, I pray, may you send us your angels, Lord, and may they put a hedge of protection around us and guide us. May you cover us with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thanks giving thanks for hearing us in our prayer. Amen. 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 Good evening, brethren. We will not say much more except to consider the song, the meditational song that we've heard and the message, and to let that sink in and be our thought process this evening before our sleep. So we'll see you once again tomorrow at 4.45 for those that are able to. 5.30 a.m. our continuation of Desire of Ages. We meet again at 12 o'clock midday after that and once again at 6.30 p.m. to prepare for our 7 p.m. message. Until then, let us continue to fight the good fight. God bless you. Sleep well. Thank you. Good night.